Welcome to Direction Northeast. Hello, I'm Flipper Durland. This program is a presentation of the Mass Communications Department of Northeast State Community College and is produced by the students through the vid college's video production facilities. This series of programs is designed to bring you the students' perspective on events and happenings throughout Northeast Tennessee. The program is a part of the classroom and laboratory learning process for students in broadcasting and advertising public relations part of the mass communications area. From Dracula to Lestat, vampires inspire thrills, terror, and a good deal of thought. Just ask any Twilight or True Blood fan. Our guest for this edition of Direction Northeast is an award-winning author and researcher. She's also a modern-day vampire. Find out more about Michelle Belanger here in just a moment. I don't dream like you. I don't have the same skin as you. I don't wear my hair like you. I don't dance like you. I don't come from the same place as you. But I will give you CPR. When you help the American Red Cross, you help America. Our guest, Michelle Belanger, is best known as the author of The Psychic Vampire Codex. She does not limit herself to magic and psychic phenomenon alone, but engages in a variety of creative outlets from fiction to music to the visual arts. Michelle has recently been on several episodes of Paranormal State, as well as documentary shows on A&E, The History Channel, and HBO. Ms. Belanger, welcome to Directions Northeast. Good, thank you. Now, um, I suppose I'd start with the first place I'd seen or heard of you on the TV show Paranormal State. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the show and what you do with the group? Uh, well, I first got involved with uh, the Paranormal Research Society before they even had a television show. Uh, LP Music and Josh Light were fans of my writing, and I started presenting at a convention they ran called UNIFCON. Uh, UNIFCON, in a lot of ways, was uh, what led to Paranormal State for them. It became one of the largest paranormal conferences in the country, hosted at State College in Pennsylvania. and. Eventually, uh, I started off just kind of doing a little background research. I have a library of about 3,000 books on occult and paranormal topics, as well as a, an extensive, complete library of Carl Jung. Uh, and I was doing background stuff for them uh, first season. If they ran into something that they were like, we think it might be a Native American spirit, and we can't find it anywhere. Could you check it out? You know, is there something that is really tiny, runs through the woods, and plays tricks on people? So, you know, I would be on the phone, call in. Uh, eventually, they were looking for, like, the perfect Michelle episode. They were hoping to find, like, vampires in New Orleans or something. Uh, when it all came down to it, I just came onto the show quite naturally, originally to help Elfie uh, as a researcher. And they didn't even know about the psychic aspect of my world. Uh, but the funny thing is, is most people hear psychic vampire, and all they hear is the vampire part. Right. Well, um, I know you've done a considerable amount of work with the show, not just as a researcher, as you've said, but also as a psychic. Um, but if you had to narrow it down, are there any particular experiences you've had while working with them that stand out in your memory? My favorite experience so far was at the Thomas Hotel in Red Boiling Springs, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. I don't usually have uh, spirits running around and knocking things over and otherwise creating a, a ruckus while I'm on the show. Usually my job is to come in give my impressions, and you know, I'm not so much uh, an investigator on the show, but at uh, the Thomas House, I was in a hallway, and I was actually doing dead time with everybody. And I'm, you know, it's my first dead time. I'm there with the, the one cameraman who kind of wanders off, takes a powder. I closed one of the doors because I thought the wind blew it open. And I asked, you know, if there was a spirit here, could you open that again? And the door had closed clicked and locked when I pulled it shut. So I had no hope that anything was actually going to happen. But much to my uh, delight, the door then actually opened uh, a little ways. And uh, everybody got to see me jump up and down and giggle like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Catch you off guard a little bit, I suppose. Yeah, I guess everybody else's response might be to shriek and run. And I was just like, do it again. Do it again. <laughs> cool. Well, um, of course, your work as a psychic is just a small part of what you do, of course. Uh, you describe yourself as a psychic vampire also, like you said. Uh, could you describe a little bit about what that means for us? A uh, psychic vampire is someone who regularly and actively needs to take human vital energy in order to maintain their health uh, and physical well-being. 
they're usually somebody who is psychic. They're aware of this energy in the first place. And usually, as a child uh, or growing up, they have some sort of chronic health problem. And their psychic ability allows them to tap into that vital force, to become aware of it in the first place. I mean, most of us just kind of swim around in that. We never consciously think about our interaction with that level of reality. I mean, we all walk into rooms where people have been arguing, and we still feel the tension on the air, even if they're not arguing anymore. We still talk about the feel of a place or the vibes of a person or not liking somebody's energy. But a psychic vampire has to be aware of that. And part of that is their interaction with that energy. It's what allows me to do my work on paranormal state. My awareness of that energy that we leave behind us, that we imprint on objects and on places, is exactly what I use when I do those kind of spooky walkthroughs. And I just sure. kind of walk into the house blindfolded and say, I feel this, I feel that, I feel that. And then we find out afterwards that that one spot I'm fixating on is exactly where you know the person in the house committed suicide right. or some crazy thing like that. Oh, well, that's very interesting. Um, I also understand you run an organization for similarly minded individuals, uh, House Keperu. Uh, yeah, House, House Keperu, like kangaroo. Keperu, sorry. It's okay. It's ancient Egyptian, so neither of us right. may be pronouncing it's, it correctly. It's one of those words I'd seen written a bunch, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. It, it, like I said, it's an ancient Egyptian word. It means transformation. Um, many years ago, I founded House Keperu. Uh, originally, I had run a group called the International Society of Vampires, and it was mostly like a pen pal network. We had a newsletter, but it was for people all over the place. I had members from England and Turkey, Japan, uh, North and South America. But I realized when I was working with uh, journalist Jeff Gwynn on his book Something in the Blood in 96 that I really hadn't focused on people local to me. Loco to me. I hadn't really focused on people local to me. Sure. So I started to see who was in the greater Cleveland area, in the Northeast Ohio area, who had similar experiences to me. And we came together partly as a social group and partly as a study group and have been going strong ever since. We have our own take on energy work and a lot of uh, exercises and ways that we've developed things. And we decided to share that with the world in my book, The Psychic Energy we decided to share that with the world in my book, The Psychic Vampire Codex. Sure. And that outlines uh, most of the basic ideas and beliefs and philosophies and practices of, uh, of the organization. In a lot of ways, it tells the story of House Kepru, and it presents our take on what psychic vampires are mm -hmm. and how they should behave, because uh, we are probably one of the biggest proponents in the modern vampire subculture of ethical use of one's abilities. If they, sure. if you are a psychic vampire, you shouldn't be taking it from people against their will. Right. Absolutely. 